Welcome to my video on multiple pregnancy. This is a part of our series called Be Aware, Be Prepared and Be Safe. This is an initiative to enable informed decision making by patients. Multiple pregnancy is one where the mother carries two or more babies in her womb. Some more background on multiple pregnancy. When an egg is released and fertilized, it becomes a zygote. It immediately divides into cells, into two cells, and each of these cells then further divides. This continues until there is ball of cells which gets implanted into the lining of the womb, and then it becomes an embryo. This embryo will develop into a fetus which will eventually become a baby. Let's take multiple pregnancy for an example. In case of non-identical twins, more than one egg is released during the menstrual cycle and it is fused by separate sperm. Then more than one embryo may implant and grow in the uterus. They are called dizygotic twins. Triplets and higher multiples are called polyzygotic. These babies have different genes and will not necessarily be of the same gender. In case of identical twins, a single egg is fertilized by a single sperm and it splits and results in multiple identical embryos. This type of pregnancy results in identical twins and they are called monozygotic twins. Identical twins are less common when compared to dizygotic babies. These babies will be of same sex and they will have identical genes. What are some of the causes of multiple pregnancy? The use of fertility drugs to induce ovulation often causes more than one egg to be released in a menstrual cycle from the ovary which can result in twins, triplets or more. In in vitro fertilization, that is IVF pregnancies, can lead to multiple pregnancy if more than one embryo is implanted into the uterus. Women older than 35 years are more likely than younger women to become pregnant with multiples as they are more likely to release two or more eggs during a single menstrual cycle. Other reasons are if the patient has a family history of twins on her mother's side or if she had had multiple pregnancy before. Is the risk of complications higher with multiple pregnancies? Yes, the risk of certain complications is higher with multiples of pregnancies. Starting in the second trimester, the patient might have to undergo scan every two to four weeks depending on the type of twin pregnancy. Multiples are more likely to have growth problems than singleton pregnancies. Multiples are called discordant if one fetus is smaller than the other. Discordant growth is common with twin gestation or triplets. It does not always signify a problem. Sometimes, though a fetus is restricted growth, it can also be due to infection or a twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome or problem with the placenta or umbilical cord. If the growth restriction is suspected in one or both babies, frequent ultrasound examination may be done to track the growth of both the babies. In case one of the twin has abnormality and the other twin is normal, one of the twins is reduced to allow the normal twin to grow. Type of scans done in multiple pregnancies. If the patient is experiencing a multiple gestation pregnancy, the obstetrician might ask for more than a routine ultrasound scan that all pregnant women have. The extra scans can be performed for multiple pregnancies are the chorionicity scan, which is usually performed during the dating scan or in the first trimester screening, where the babies share a placenta or do they have different placenta for each. Growth scans in the third trimester will check whether the babies are growing normally or not. Babies sharing a single placenta will be scanned every two weeks from 16 weeks onwards. Babies who have their own placenta will be scanned every four weeks from 20 weeks onwards. Scanning twins is more of a challenge than scanning one baby because one twin might be over the other. This means that it might not be very easy to see the babies clearly. If one baby's head is low in the pelvis, it would be very difficult to get any measurement. The scan will take more time than they would for a singleton baby. It might not be easy to check the baby's growth and scans will not tell how exactly the baby is growing. 
By, but by measuring them each time during a scan, it is possible to get an idea whether one baby is growing more than the other or the other baby is growing less. Differences in size of twins, whether they are identical or not, is expected and it is normal. It is only when one twin is 25% more or bigger than the other or growing much faster, then there must be a problem. Prenatal screening in multiple pregnancy. It should be noted that in multiple pregnancy, there is a greater likelihood of Down syndrome. Hence, different options of screening and higher false positive rates of screening test. In case of monozygotic twins, the risk is the same for each twin. However, if the babies are not monozygotic, the risk of Down syndrome will be different for each baby. It is not possible to be as accurate in determining the risk in multiple pregnancies as when it is in a single baby. As a result of these, these patients have greater likelihood of being offered an invasive testing. Invasive, invasive tests for birth defects include coronicular sampling and amniocentesis. These tests are harder to perform in multiple pregnancies because each fetus has to be tested. If one fetus is detected with an abnormality, selective termination, if desired, must be accurately targeted. Selective termination in monochorionic pregnancies could pose a risk to the co-twin. What is twin to twin transfusion syndrome? Triple TS or twin to twin transfusion syndrome can affect identical twins who share a common placenta. They are called monochorionic twins. Triple TS happens when there is an imbalance in the placental blood vessels that connect both the twins. If the blood does not evenly flow between the twins, one gets more blood, which is called the recipient twin, and the other twin gets reduced blood, which is called the donor twin. The uneven blood flow results in the recipient twin growing bigger and bigger due to extra nutrients and fluid than the donor twin. The extra fluid in the recipient twin takes it can, it can put a strain on the twin's heart. The body will get rid of the extra fluid by producing more urine. As a result, the recipient will have too much of surrounding amniotic fluid, while the donor will have little or none. The recipient twin and the extra fluid can press the donor twin against the wall of the uterus. This may make the mother uncomfortable, can even result in preterm labor or contractions. The vast majority of twins who share a common placenta grow normally. A majority of monochorionic twins do not develop triple TS. TTTS can be very serious if it's not treated. However, treatment is successful in very significant percentage of cases. The scans for TTTS take place every two weeks from 16 weeks onwards up to 24 weeks. If there are any signs of TTTS may be developing, the patient should have weekly scans and undergo further treatment. The fetal medicine specialist can offer multiple choice to the patients. The option are, one is to drain the excessive amniotic fluid, which is called the amniodrainage or amnioreduction. This may help to correct the imbalance and reduce the pressure inside the womb in mild to moderate TTTS. In severe cases of TTTS, before 26 weeks, there is another option. The specialist may be able to use a laser to close the placental vessels which are communicating between the two babies. A laser beam is used to destroy the abnormal vascular connections connecting the two twins. It is performed by a fetal medicine specialist under local anesthesia. The procedure may take 30 to 60 minutes time. A tiny telescope is inserted into the amniotic cavity through a minute incision on the mother's abdomen. The abnormal vessels viewed are then closed by heat or coagulation. They will stop the blood imbalance between the two twins. The specialist may also drain the excessive amniotic fluid from the recipient twin sac. While the laser treatment is permanent, treatment for TTTS, amniotic drainage or reduction has to be repeated. However, laser treatment is more complex. There is a risk of patient's water breaking, the placenta coming away during the procedure, bleeding, abruption, or miscarriage. If the patient undergoes treatment for TTTS, then she will have to be scanned regularly to check that the problem is resolved and the babies are growing well. This may at least take weekly scans until birth. 
babies affected by TTTS are more likely to be born premature. Multiple pregnancy. To summarize, a multiple pregnancy is one where the mother is carrying more than one child like twins, triplets or more. Twins can be non-identical or identical. The risk of certain complications is higher with multiples. Starting in the second trimester, the patient may have ultrasound exams every two to four weeks. For example, multiples are more likely to have growth problems than single babies. Multiples are called discordant if one fetus is much smaller than the other. Certain scans such as chorionicity scan are done additionally in cases of multiple pregnancies. The risk of disorders such as Down syndrome is higher in case of a multiple pregnancy. It is not possible to be as accurate in determining this risk in multiple pregnancies as it is when there is just one baby. As a result of this, patients have greater likelihood of being offered invasive testing. Identical twins sometimes experience what is called twin to twin transfusion syndrome where one twin gets more blood than the other. In such cases, laser treatment or amniodrainage is offered. For your benefit, all this information and more is available on our website www.chennewomensclinic.com.